In today's video, we will be looking at how to evaluate composite functions. If you are new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit that notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. Alright guys, so I want to look at how to evaluate composite functions, alright? And in this video, we'll be looking at about two examples of these types of questions, alright? Now, here we have example 1, given that g of x is equal to 2x minus 3 and f of x is equal to x minus 1, find part 1, g of f of x, part 2, f of g of x, alright? Now let's see how we can evaluate these types of questions. Let's start with part one. All right, so here we have g of f of x, all right? And this is the same thing as substituting the entire f of x function into the g of x function, all right? So let's see how we can treat with this. Recall that the g of x function is equal to 2x minus three, all right? So that's the g of x function right there. Now what we're going to do in order for us to find g of f of x, we're going to substitute the f of x function into the g of x function, all right? So in other words, wherever we have x, we are going to replace the x with x minus one, which is the f of x function, all right? So here we go. So right away, I'm going to replace this x here with the f of x function, which is x minus one. All right, so wherever I have x, I'm going to replace the x with x minus 1. All right, and here I have the minus 3 just the same. All right, now what we can do, I can use a distributive law to expand this bracket right here. So I can have 2 times x and 2 times negative 1 as well. All right, so I'm going to use a 2 to multiply each term in the bracket. So 2 times x, that will give me 2x, 2 times minus 1. That's negative 2, and I still have the minus 3 out here, all right? Now we can simplify this thing some more. So we have the 2x. What's minus 2 minus 3? Of course, that's minus 5, all right? So therefore, g of f of x is equal to 2x minus 5, all right? So that's basically how we treat with a problem like that one in part one. Now, let's see how we treat with part two, all right? So now we are required to find f of g of x, all right? And this time around, we are going to substitute the g of x function into the f of x function, all right? So first thing first, we want to recall the f of x function, which is this right here. So f of x is equal to x minus one, all right? So we want to recall that, so f of x is equal to x minus one, all right? So in order for us to find f of g of x, we're going to, wherever we have x, we're going to replace the x with the entire g of x function, all right? So here we have g of x being equal to two x minus three. So we're going to replace the x here with two x minus three, all right? So two x minus three. All right, so wherever we have x over here, we're going to replace the x with 2x minus 3. I still have the minus 1 out here. Now we can get rid of the parentheses, so we're left with 2x minus 3 minus 1. And we can always simplify this thing some more, so we're left with 2x minus 3 minus 1. Of course, that's minus 4. So we can say, therefore, f of g of x is equal to 2x minus 4, all right? So that's pretty much how we treat the problems that we were given in example one, all right? Now let us look at example two. Now we're looking at example two, all right? So the functions f and g are defined as f of x is equal to 2x plus four all over five, and g of x is equal to 3x minus 7, all right? And from this, they ask us to find part 1, f of g of x, 
part two, hence the term in f of g of five, all right? And once we see the word hence here, then we know that part one is related to part two. Now let's see how we treat with a question like this one, all right? So here we have part one and we want to find f of g of x, all right? And again, just like example one, if we want to find f of g of x, then that simply means we're going to substitute the g of x function into the f of x function, all right? So first thing first, we want to recall the f of x function, all right, which is this thing right here. So f of x is equal to 2x plus 4 all over 5, all right? And what we want to do now is to substitute the g of x function into the f of x function, all right? So wherever we have x, we're going to replace the x with the 3x minus 7, all right? So replacing the x here with 3x minus 7. All right, so wherever we see x in this function, we're going to replace the x with 3x minus 7. All right, so 3x minus 7. Still have the positive 4 there, all over 5. All right, now we can always simplify. All right, so using the distributive law, we're going to use this tool here to multiply each term inside the bracket, so 2 times 3x. That's 6x, 2 times negative 7, that's negative 14. Still have the positive 4 out here. And this is all over 5, all right? Now we can simplify some more. So we have 6x, what's negative 14 plus 4? Of course, this is negative 10, all right? And this is all over 5, all right? So therefore, we can say f of g of x is equal to 6x minus 10 all over 5, all right? So this is our f of g of x function, all right? Now let us see how we treat with part 2, all right, which is hence determine f of g of 5, all right? And before we can find f of g of a given value, then we first must know the f of g of x function which we just found, all right? So what we can now do is to simply substitute the value of five wherever we have x in the f of g of x function, all right? So this is the f of g of x function here. So f of g of x we know is equal to six x minus 10 all over five, all right? So if we want to find f of g of five, all right, then we want to replace wherever we have x here with the value of five, all right? So we have six times five minus 10 all over five, all right? So let's see what we get when we simplify this thing. So six times five, that's 30 minus 10 all over five. 30 minus 10 is 20 over 5, which will give us a positive 4 right here, all right? So what we can now say, therefore, f of g of 5 is equal to 4. All right, so this is pretty much how we treat with evaluating composite functions. This is where we'll be ending today's video. I'm going to leave you guys with a question, the one that you're currently seeing on screen. I want you guys to evaluate this question and let me know the answer in the comments below. Now, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please take this time out to do so. Don't forget to like the video and hit the notification bell to be notified whenever we post new videos. As always, thanks for watching.